Good afternoon, Your Honor. Section 21, no, Section 29 of the APA on a maximum of 24 days detention of alleged suspected terrorists without judicial warrant of arrest obviously defies more than a century of libertarian tradition enjoyed by Filipinos against unreasonable seizures of their person, dating back to the Malolos Constitution of 1899, the Bill of 1902, the Jones Law of 1916, and the Constitutions of 1935, 1973, and 1987. In stark contrast with the APA, the Malolos Constitution, the first Constitution of the Philippines, and the first Republican charter in all of Asia mandated that, quote, all persons detained shall be discharged or delivered to the judicial authority within 24 hours following the act of detention. That was 122 years ago. Now the APA has ominously retrogressed to draconian times. Warrants of arrest are invariably issued solely by a judge. Although during the martial law regime, in addition to, judici to judicial warrants, executive warrants like ASOS, PCOs, and PDAs were issued upon authority of President Marcos and legitimized by the 1973 Constitution. This anomaly was junk by the 1987 Constitution which deleted the phrase, quote, or such other responsible officer as may be authorized by law, unquote. And it reverted to the 1935 provision on judicial warrants of arrest upon probable cause and added, quote, to be determined personally by the judge, unquote. Now, except for three instances of authorized warrantless arrest under Section 5 of Rule 115 of the Rules of Court, the inflexible rule is that no arrest can be effected legally without a judicial warrant of arrest. Detention upon the unilateral and unbridled authorization of the Anti-Terrorism Council, which is a purely executive agency, arrogates judicial jurisdiction and resurrects the infamous assos of the martial law of martial law dictates. This executive authorization of prolonged detention is reminiscent of the Spanish Inquisition, when persons suspected of heresy and witchcraft were incarcerated for long periods without being charged and tried. They were mercilessly tortured during dentist custody. Extended detention induces the commission of torture to coerce confession in violation of the Anti-Torture Act of 2009. Long detention without judicial intervention must be prescribed to foreclose the incidents of torture. Section 29 of the APA violates the Convention Against Torture and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, prohibiting arbitrary arrest or detention to which the Philippines is a state party. It is grossly ironic that when the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus is suspended, the 1987 constitution mandates that the detention of a person shall not exceed three days, within which he shall be judicially charged or otherwise he shall be released. But during normal times under the ATA, Extra judicial detention is a maximum of 24 days. In warrantless arrest, the period of detention is del delimited by Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code. The maximum width is 36 hours. Extra judicial arrests and detentions without judicial oversight for 24 days are arbitrary, even odious. Verily, an executive warrant of detention violates the separation of powers. 
the APA also unlawfully expands the rule on warrantless arrests, thereby usurping the exclusive rule-making power of the Supreme Court under Section 5.5 of Article 8 of the Constitution on the court protection and enforcement of constitutional rights, unquote. Prolonged detention denies the suspect's right to be presumed innocent, deprives him of his right to seasonably post bail, derails his right to speedy disposition of his case, divests him of his right to promptly avail of the writs of habeas corpus and amparo, and derogates his right against torture. These constitutional rights presuppose brief pre-trial detention. Even the safeguards for detained suspects under the similarly challenged Human Security Act have been abandoned by the APA. This blatant transgression of the Constitution should not wait for an actual case to happen, to be struck down, since the constitutional infirmity is patent on the face of Section 29, wherein an executive authorization for detention supplants a judicial warrant of arrest. Mere suspicion takes the place of a prior judicial finding of probable cause. And the 24-day maximum extrajudicial detention is inordinately long and oppressive, all in violation of Section 2 of the Bill of Rights and other fundamental safeguards. Your Honors, the Congress committed grave abuse of discretion in passing the APA. The multiple odious violations of the Constitution authorized by the APA evidently manifest the grave abuse of discretion of the Congress in passing this aberration of our legislation. The original scene emanated from the Senate, which forced past the grievously infirm Senate Bill Number 1083. Senator Pampilo Lacson, the bill's principal author, justified prolonged detention without judicial warrant of arrest purportedly to foreclose in Kuwait offense or when no crime has yet been committed. This is an unmitigated assault on due process. The House, with censurable alacrity, adopted in toto the Senate version, thus precluding the efficacy of a bicameral conference. Its grave abuse was highlighted with the utter denial of extensive debates and abusive rejection of curative amendments. The tyranny of the supermajority railroaded the passage of the copycat House Bill number 6875 in a single session of about four hours, from sponsorship to approval on second read. Consequently, Your Honors, judicial recourse to the Honorable Supreme Court is the only remedy to redress and relief on behalf of the Filipino people. Thank you, Your Honors. Congressman, does the word terrorism appear in our Constitution, the many constitutions that we adopted from 1935 to 1972 to 1987? I, Your Honor, I am not aware. You are not aware. We are not I'm aware too. So you are not aware also when the word terrorism or crime of terrorism became a part of our statute book? Well, Your Honor, uh, in the case of the Human Security Act ah. of uh, uh, 2007, terrorism there has been defined. And then uh, it refers to the Commission of Predicate Crimes, which uh, provision has not been uh, uh, APA. So our consciousness or our mind was only open to the the word terrorism or terroristic act when the human security act was passed well i am not certain your honor if there were antecedent legislation 
covering uh, uh, terrorism. It's possible that under the AMLA, uh, terrorism was also mentioned and uh, other uh, laws concerning uh, financing of terrorism. But I am not certain about that and I can discuss that, uh, Your, uh, Your Honor, in the memorandum. I okay, thank you. So we go to a specific Article 7, Section 18 of our Constitution, and this is the uh, provision on habeas corpus, which only allow a detention for not more than three days, right, uh, Congressman? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, under uh, that particular uh, provision of the Constitution, even during the suspension of the written habeas corpus, no person can be detained for more than three days. Okay. Otherwise, he should be uh, released or be brought to the judicial authority. Uh, are we safe to say that since terrorism was not in the mind yet, or not a crime punishable when the 1970, when the 1987 constitution was passed, would, can it not be said that this article on a three-day detention on Habe does not ap strictly apply to acts of terrorism? Uh, we cannot uh, subscribe to that, Your Honor, because the provision of the Constitution uh, is omnibus. Is? Omnibus. It would cover all possible crimes. Even martial law? During martial law. Even, even, uh, during the, even, even covering the proclamation of martial law, detention cannot go beyond three days? Yes, Your Honor. Particularly so, when uh, the suspension of the writ of habeas corpus is a component of the declaration of martial law. So it's your position that uh, the three-day limitation on detention still covers acts of terrorism, although terrorism was not a word, was not a crime that was punished when yes. the 1987 Constitution was passed. Yes, Your Honor, because uh, that provision should have a, a prospective application that would cover acts of terrorism. My last question, the Congressman, is like this. Since terrorism is a new phenomenon, drastic at that, involving the security of the nation, endangering lives and liberties of people and properties as well, cannot Congress legislate longer period of detention more than what is, uh, longer than what is prescribed under rule I, under Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code? Uh, Your Honor, Congress cannot derogate the protection on civil liberties and other fundamental freedoms. In the, the enactment of the APA, Congress has put uh, the Sir, nawala po kayo. Hindi namin kayo narinig. <laughs> Just paano? Uh, can I can I I am clear now, Your Honor? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well. Uh, as I was saying, uh, Congress cannot pass a law against terrorism by derogating civil and political rights, safeguarded in the Constitution, Your Honor. But in the case of the APA, it has put the war against terrorism in a pedestal, while it has demoted civil liberties to a footstool, which to should have, it, which should have done. Ano po? 
it was it has demoted the protection of civil liberties to a foot stone stone okay parang inaapakan na lang parang inaapakan na po inaapakan na po foot stone parang inaapakan na lang po yes your honor ganun ba yun? sige uh, thank you thank you congressman lagman good afternoon congressman good afternoon your honor no. My question is, Section 29 of the Anti-Terrorism Act allows the arrest of a person suspected of committing any of the, the acts penalized under Sections 4 to 12 of the Anti-Terrorism Act, even without a warrant. Now, is there, is there a case law which holds that a legislative measure is presumed to be in harmony with the Constitution? and that every intent of constitutionality must be read in its favor? Yes, Your Honor. That is the basic. Can we not How, harmonize? However, however, okay. however Your Honor, under the Constitution, a warrant of arrest shall issue only upon probable cause determined personally by the judge. In other words, any warrant issued by the executive agency cannot be consistent with the Constitution because the, the validity of a warrant of arrest should comply to three basic conditions. One, it should be issued by the judge. Two, upon probable cause. And personally determined by the judge. The, the, the section uh, 29, the ATA, has no saving grace whatsoever because it directly violates the Constitution. So you do not think that uh, section 29 can be harmonized with the Constitution and that uh, to arrive at the interpretation that a person who may be arrested or detained without a warrant refers not to a mere suspect but a suspect who is found to be in flagrante delicto or one who is arrested because based on personal knowledge of the arresting officer, there is probable cause that he or she is the perpetrator. Well, in this case, Your Honor, the intention of the law is to create a, a fourth instance of warrantless arrest. That is the uh, seizure of the person who is suspected of committing acts of terrorism upon the authorization of the uh, ATC. However, uh, Your Honor, with respect to warrantless arrest, time is of the essence. It is critical that the person who committed a crime or is about to commit a crime, or is committing a crime, would have to be arrested in flagrante delicto or in hot pursuit. But in the case of uh, Section 27, when the, when the law provides that the uh, arresting officer should for secure uh, an, a written order, from the obtention from the ATC, then, then that time is not of the essence, which would fall under the three instances provided for under uh, uh, the section uh, uh, five rule uh, one one three of the rules of court. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman. Can I call on Attorney Molo?